hi guys so once again life got the better of me this last month and all of my excitement for end of year content and book this and stuff just kind of had to die <laughs> because I just didn't have the energy to do them and I'm really kind of upset about it because I was excited about ideas that I had but it's fine I'm just gonna work on them in my head and then I'll get them ready for next year but I'm here I took a little mini kind of break from booktube I was uploading vlogs but not really much else and I was putting minimal effort into my content but today I mean I'm still putting minimal effort in I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about my goals for the upcoming year both personal and bookish mostly bookish but if you watch my vlogs you will know from my recent one that I want to be a lot more open about mental health I mean just me in general but my mental health specifically because I think the best way to tackle stigma is to be like hey this is the reality so I do want to talk about personal goals but I will leave them until the end because a lot of them will deal with health and I know that that can be a problem for people so I'll let you guys know when we're going to get to that point of the video so that if you aren't comfortable with that you can click off but first we're going to start just with bookish goals <laughs> So I wouldn't say I have a lot of bookish goals for 2019. As for our Goodreads reading challenge, I am going to keep the same as I have this year. So it's going to be 100 books. Originally for 2018 I was just going to read however many books I wanted. I wasn't really going to have a Goodreads goal and I decided, I don't know why, but I was like no I'll just, I'll do the 100. I think it's because I was steadily building up towards it so I was like no I'll do the 100 books and then I'll go to just reading whatever I want. But now that I'm back on booktube I do feel that having that challenge motivates me to read and that's useful with booktube because you kind of need to be reading to talk about books and I just I just feel like keeping it at 100 books I like that number I, I feel like that is it's a very achievable goal for me and I am ready to absolutely kick that goal in the ass in 2019 so 100 books if not more as for like specific reading goals my main one for 2019 is to read more middle grade so I am very like unromantic in life I I think love is fake and like you know I just it's just not me like I am quite happy just going in life alone with cats like I ain't about romantic relationships like not my thing and whilst I do enjoy a good cliche romantic novel and shit I get so annoyed when I'm reading like a really good fantasy or contemporary or just anything and there's like an unnecessary romance like why? Whereas in middle grade, these kids are trying to save the fucking world and they're not distracted by people of usually the opposite sex. So I want more middle grade because I just want all my action and adventure and none of this like, oh, but I love it. Like, fuck that. Fuck that. Right. So middle grade because very minimal romance, if any. <laughs> I also want to focus on rereading in 2019. And that is something that's really difficult because obviously I have so many unread books and I want to get to all these books and there's just so many books I don't even own that I haven't read and I want to read so it's really hard to take that reading time away from something you haven't experienced to go back but I think it's important that we do that you know just just because like it's a comfort and I just I there's some stories that I just I absolutely adore and I mean I was going to reread Stargirl this year so I could read Love Stargirl and I haven't reread it yet so definitely a goal to reread a lot more books than I usually do not just Harry Potter audiobooks and the third goal is kind of more a challenge that will link in with the other two and that is getting through like backlist TBR so I'm sure you guys all understand like in our heads we have like a priority list of books and there are just some books that we want to get to and we own and they're not quite unhaul worthy but like we're really never gonna get to them and that's why people do like TBR jars and things but that's not really how I want to do it what I want to do because I want to start doing monthly TBRs in 2019 I know I'm really bad at TBRs but I want to do monthly TBRs and part of that is so I can make sure I'm putting in a reread and make sure I'm putting in a middle grade but also getting through just books that I wouldn't usually pick up so my plan is to basically 
make a list on Goodreads. I was just going to do my entire like to be read but then knowing me I'd always get books that I'm actually going to pick up anyway. So I'm going to make a list of books that I really should have gotten to by now and that I know that I wouldn't just go and pick up and I'm going to randomise that list every month and I'm going to take the one that's at the very top and I'm going to have to read that. I think that's really my only kind of reading goals. I just want to read and enjoy what I'm reading. Booktube wise I want to be a lot more consistent. I don't know how I feel about my vlogs at the moment. Like I enjoyed doing them then I took time off and then I kind of missed them and now I'm kind of in a I'm not really vlogging but then it was Christmas. I think I'm going to try keeping up with vlogs but I'm going to focus more on them being reading vlogs. I get very worried that I won't have enough footage and I just start making random footage and then it gets to editing and it's like an hour and a half long and it's really stressful. So if I actually focus on just talking about the books that I'm reading and stuff that'll kind of make life a little bit easier I think. So we'll see. Vlogs will be switching up a little bit and possibly dying in 2019. Regular content. I'm meant to be uploading Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, yeah I'm really bad at that. So I definitely want to keep those days as my like scheduled upload days. I've just got to get myself into a zone of filming and editing and I did try having backlogged videos like some of them edited, some, like some unedited so I can edit when I'm in the mood and some completely finished just to upload if I need them but I feel that with booktube for me I much prefer like I work so much easier filming, editing and uploading almost like the same day and I just I like that because if I do like a tag video if I leave that for a month, even a week, my opinion might have changed so I just like to, everything to be really fresh. I want to try and work on just more creative content and I don't know what I mean by that, like I don't know. I want to try and do more review videos and things because I feel like I'll do hauls and I'll do wrap ups but I'm just like I don't know what the book's about or I'll read a book and I'll be like yeah I really, I really liked it but like I don't want to talk about it much because spoilers. But then there's nothing there on my channel where I actually do go in depth and I especially want to do more rant reviews. Now the problem with that is I don't want to be reading bad books. So naturally if I hate a book I'm going to DNF it, I'm a big DNFer. But I will do a rant about that so like, like Bridge of Clay I didn't finish that but I still ranted about it. So there's going to be a lot more tea, salty tea, <laughs> on this channel I think because do you know, as an aspiring author, and I know a lot of aspiring authors say this, where they're like, I mean, I am an author because I write, but do you know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of us get like, I don't want to say anything bad because if it was about me, but I literally don't give a fuck. Like, I am living for the day that people can be like, Emma Novella's book is fucking dreadful. Because I just, I just love it. And like, it's such a subjective thing. So like, you know, I never ever expect an author to come on my channel and watch my review. Do you know... I think we, in general, people need to start realising that things are just a bit of fun and we all just need to chill the fuck out. And yes, I'm saying that when I want to be like, oh my god, like about a book, but like it's a bit of fun and come on, who's not entertained by somebody's anger at like a bit of fiction, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So definitely planning to do more rant reviews and just general stuff like that, like things like reading negative reviews of favourite books and good reviews of books I hate and stuff like that, like I love that kind of content and yeah just, I don't know, I don't really know what I want to do but I want to do it if that makes sense. As for like statistics, my main like subscriber goal, because let's be real, as much as people say don't worry about the numbers, like it's what we're doing, you know, it's how the system works. I would like to hit 5k by this time next year but I don't know how plausible that is because I kind of hit 1k and then stopped kind of creating regularly so I don't know how my channel is growing on average and I know that kind of when you hit like when you hit 100 subscribers you start growing faster but then you hit a thousand you start growing even faster so I don't know I'm not really bothered at this point like I was just amazed to like hit 100 subscribers so like having hit a thousand I'm quite content um because if I get 4,000 hours of watch time I can start making the money so I don't care as long as it stays above a thousand but I think 5k is a reasonable to kind of aim for and the only reason I'm really putting a number on it is that 
to gain subscribers, you need to be making content. So if I have a subscriber goal in my head, I will be more likely to keep making content for you guys because I know that's like how it works. I don't know. I just want all the people in the world that I can shout about Dimily to. Let's, let's be real. <laughs> Dimily and Wicked and Loomis and Scotland and Iron Brew. The more people, the better, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my only channel goals. I would like to go to Yalk just to go to Yalk. I want to go to BookCon, but Estelle was like, you can't travel the Atlantic for a book festival. And I'm like, yes, I fucking can. But uh, accommodation in New York is expensive. So if anyone else is going to BookCon and you all want to club together for a room so we can like pay less money, let me know. Cause I can totally get on board a trip to New York alone. I would love to go to New York alone. So yeah. <laughs> Writing goals for 2019 are literally to fucking write. I have a bad habit for finishing a draft or getting very close to finishing a draft and going, this is shit, bye, or I can't edit this, bye, and starting something new. However, the piece that I wrote for Nano this year, I got very close to finishing and I'm, I, I like the piece. I mean, it's getting a bit shitty towards the sort of ending, like it didn't go the way I wanted it to. But the idea I have for that novel and the whole like story and everything, I don't feel I have the skills to write right now. I feel like I need to hone my craft, I need to work on my craft, I need to work on my skills as a writer. Like my punctuation and grammar and all that shit is like non-existent these days. So I really need to fucking learn how to write and how to edit before worrying about that piece that I'm like really excited about. So January 7th, I am officially starting writing like regularly. That day in particular because that's when Estelle is starting to write. She's writing her seventh book. I'm on like, I'm only my fifth. It's just I haven't published any of them. <laughs> but Estelle and I are going to start writing like together just to motivate each other and I originally wanted to have a manuscript ready to submit in March. However, I am likely going to be starting something new and I don't want to rush myself with a deadline because I think I'm overwhelming myself with it. I'm not allowing myself to just feel the story and learn what I need to do. Like, I'm so focused on making everything perfect when I don't even know how to do that and there's no such thing as a perfect story. So January 7th, I'm gonna start writing regularly, writing for fun and trying not to be like, oh, but this could get published because the story I have in mind isn't one that I actually would think of getting published so if I finish it and I edit it then sure but this is going to be a piece that I go into not planning to submit and we'll see if that actually makes me get to submission point with it <laughs> because I do I get to the point where I'm like but if I finish it then I've got no excuse not to edit it and then I've got no excuse not to submit it so I'm like no this one's not being submitted therefore I might actually edit it because then I wasn't planning to submit it so like there's no like, oh, but then you don't have to be rejected because like it was never going to be sent off anyway. It makes sense to me. <laughs> and I think that's all my kind of bookish goals. Journaling, I started creative journaling this year and I want to continue doing that. And I also want to try and actually like write journal entries every day. And I want to try and like, well, this is now just getting into like normal stuff, but I want to paint more and I want to bake more. But yeah, that's kind of all my bookish stuff. So I'm gonna move on to personal goals, which are written down in this. So this is my Clever Fox planner that the absolutely gorgeous Kevin from Storyglyph sent me from my Amazon wishlist. I still want to cry when I think about it. He sent me this at a very perfect time. I was really struggling. I was getting to the point where I was wondering, you know, why am I here? What is my point in the world? Like. I'm never gonna be able to achieve what I want to. And then he sends me this planner that is literally made to help you like be productive and achieve goals and just be better. And I was like, of everything on my wish list, he had to just choose that at that time. And I freaking love this, okay? Like I haven't used it yet. I've only just done like setting up and I am obsessed because it's just, it's a planner, but it focuses on like your goals and it helps you break things down. So like, I've, it's got things like your affirmations and gratitude lists and things. I need to do my vision board for the year, but it has a goals list. And there are eight sections, although 
I've kind of put two together so there's health and there's spiritual but I'm using spiritual as like mindfulness and just an extension of health but more mental. There's also business and career, family and friends, significant other and romance, finance, personal development and fun and recreation and there's a spot for three goals within each of those sections and then I have picked five of each goals and that's the five I'm really focusing on this year. So I'm focusing on health, business and career which is booktube finance, personal development and fun and recreation. But like for example for some of the ones I'm not focusing on like for significant other and romance I am a very unromantic person so like plan another trip to Paris is what I've put there because Paris is a city of romance. I've also put brackets solo because I really want to try and travel solo which is so out of my comfort zone but I just I don't know I feel like it's something I would like to try Maybe London would be a good place to start for Yalk. <laughs> so I'm actually pretty excited about my goals and I do think they're quite achievable. Some of them do kind of link together as well and some of them are just things that are going to happen. But obviously at this point we're going to start talking about health things and one of mine is related to weight. So if you're, you know, I know there's been a lot of talk recently about how it can be very negative for some people to hear others talking about like their weight loss goals and stuff for the year so if you aren't comfortable listening to people talking about that I fully understand and you can click off this video now if not we're gonna have a talk about weight loss and shit because look at me <laughs> I am a very self-depreciating person like I just make fun of myself all the time don't worry I don't like hate me I am quite happy but I am not healthy <laughs> So my main goal for the year is to lose five stone. I am five stone overweight. I am in the obese category for BMI and I'm not happy with that. I'm, I currently weigh something like 15 and a half stone, maybe 16. I need to lose five stone to be healthy. So that is my goal. I thought it was very unachievable for a year but actually it turns out that you can basically lose like a stone a month so to give myself a year for that is very good because I have had issues in the past where I would just kind of stop eating like there are pictures of me when I was like 15, 16, 17 and I thought I was huge right and I am like a stick and that was around at the time where I had like stopped eating and I did like really unhealthy things to lose weight so losing weight for me is quite difficult because I always worry that I'm going to go into like panic mode or like just like stop eating so giving myself like more than double the amount of time that I could lose that weight in I think is really healthy for my mindset because that way I'm not going to be like I have to hurry up and lose that you know like I could I could technically lose five stone by like June but I'm going to try and do that by December and I'm going to do it healthily by like having smoothies and just eating less junk food, not starving myself. <laughs> My camera is about to die again, for goodness sake. The second goal we've kind of talked about is to get 5k subscribers. Um, my third goal is to save £500 because with my mental health recently I am fucking a nightmare at saving money and I spend way too much money on books usually. So I want to make sure that I have £500 in my savings by the end of the year so I always have something there for a rainy day. Goal four is to Pratiquer les Français. I want to practice French every day. I want to try and read in French and just become French. <laughs> and my fifth goal is to reread more books, which we have spoken about. I am rushing that there more than I'd have liked to, but my camera is dying and I want to take this face off because it's starting to melt. But yeah those are my goals and let me know what yours are. Let me know if you've got any like tips for achieving mine. I don't know like in any any of them like healthy weight loss tips, money saving tips, budgeting tips, rereading tips, anything. I don't care. Just let me, oh I want to read more audiobooks. So any audio subscriptions like Scribd that actually let you listen to the books <laughs> would be great. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys all have an amazing 2019. We are going to smash all of our goals, reading and personal and everything else. And when am I putting this up? I don't know. Either it's new year so happy new year or have a good new year. I don't know. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!